So you got yourself on Honor View 20? You need to know these tips and tricks after my intro. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone, I'm Techzilla. I'm back again with another video. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top tips and tricks for the Honor View 20. We're gonna run through the settings, the menus, etc. So you get an idea of how to best use your brand new shiny, shiny View 20. Now, straight off the bat, I've got the eight gig version, 256 gigs of storage. I've converted it into the Machino variant. And end of the day, the Machino variant is just the same phone, but with a Machino theme thrown on top. Now I've got a black wallpaper here. The reason I've gone with a black wallpaper is not to save battery because this is an LCD panel, but it's to hide the punch hole camera up there. So as you can see here, you cannot see that camera and it looks edge to edge the whole screen. So worthwhile thinking about if you want to hide that punch hole camera on your screen, it gives it a much more fluid look in my honest opinion. So first things first, let's start off with the actual home screen. So you pinch in to bring up these different things here. So wallpaper, widgets, transitions, they're all basic, straightforward. You know what they do. Wallpaper is obviously the background here. Widgets are things like this clock or Facebook widgets, etc. Transitions is how it moves from one home screen to another. So it can do a sliding effect, a bouncing effect, etc. Not hugely important. But what we want to look at here is the home screen settings. So if we go into here, first thing I did was I changed the layout to five by six. Basically what that does is it gives me five by six icons on the home screen. You can have a four by six or a five by five, but I like to have as many um, icons on my home screen as possible. So I would recommend going with the five by six. Next, you can lock your layout. So once you set up your home screen, you hit this toggle here, it locks that as it is. Auto align, so you toggle this on, it automatically fills empty spaces when apps are removed. So if you remove a app from your home screen, something you're no longer using, this will automatically realign all the remaining icons on the home screen. Shake to realign is something I really don't use. You switch this on, Basically, you can shake your phone and realign all the apps on the home screen. Not a huge, hugely good feature for me, but it's there if you need it. Now, app icon badges. So if I go into here now, it can show, you can pick which apps you want to be no, having little dots above them. As you can see there, those little green dots to show when you've got a notification through for that. So for example, I've got Amazon Music here, display dot notification. I can switch it off if I want to. I'll switch it back on. You can go into here, dis badge display mode, unread messages or new messages. So let's go with unread messages because what that does is it now makes these little dots red and you get a little number in there showing you how many unread messages you've actually got in that particular app. So we come out of here. App suggestions, switch that off because you don't want to be bombarded with notifications telling you we recommend this game or we recommend um, this app. It's just pointless. Don't have that on, switch it off. Home screen loop. Now you switch this on if you do not want to have Google feed. So when you swipe from home screen to home screen, it goes like a carousel. It'll go all the way around from the front first home screen, all the way around to the last one and then background without having to swipe back on itself. Pretty straightforward. And Google feed. If you want to have Google feed switched on, switch it on. I do because I find it useful. So we'll come out of this. So that's that. Now we'll come down to here and we're looking at this section up here. If I click on that little pencil, now here, you can rearrange which icons you have up here. So I don't use NFC that often. So if I remove that and put it down here, but I do use do not display, I can put that up there. I can move the subscriber count. That's just something I use personally. So you can change this in the order that you feel is best for you. 
I would seriously suggest that's one of the first things I would do if I was in your shoes. If you click on here, you can reset it and it takes it all back to how it was before you started fiddling with it. So that's a very good tip right there. And as you could see, when I went into there, you could see the punch hole camera there. That's where that black wallpaper really does help in hiding that. So now you can see we've got digital balance here. I will get into that in a second, but I'll go into the little cog wheel here. First things first, set up a Huawei ID. If you don't have one, if you do have one, log into it. Um, it just helps you sync across different Honor and Huawei devices. I always do it. It just, plus any backups from previously old devices are then generated into the new device I have here. So wireless and networks. Now I've got Wi-Fi and data switched off because I don't want notifications coming through. But if we go into Wi-Fi, I won't switch it on because we'll get, as I said, notifications. But if I click on these arrows, you want to go into Wi-Fi Plus. Switch this on because basically what this does is it will switch between your Wi-Fi and your mobile data, especially where one of them is not stable. And I've been having a lot of issues with my Wi-Fi. And if I didn't have this switched on, my Wi-Fi was switching off. If this didn't go straight into its mobile data, I wouldn't get any of my notifications coming through, nothing like that. We just try and keep trying to connect to Wi-Fi. So it switches between them, depending on the strength of each signal. Um, it automatically enables Wi-Fi. So when you go out of your house, without you having to switch off Wi-Fi, it'll automatically go into mobile data. When you come home, it'll automatically reconnect to your home hub. Makes life a lot easier. I like stuff like that. It's like having a concierge on hand. And it also evaluates network quality of nearby Wi-Fi hotspots, public networks, etc. When I'm on the underground, this also helps a lot because it automatically connects me to the London Underground Wi-Fi, which is set up by my carrier, which I get free because of my plan. So it come out of there. Actually, let's have a look in settings quickly. This stuff, I'm not going to get into. Do not play around with this, with your IP, IP address and so on. Leave it alone. Uh, mobile networks. Now, these are all greyed out because I've simply taken my SIM cards out because I don't want my numbers on show here. So general mobile data, switch it on, data usage. It allows you to use your mobile data. Now you can have SIM 1 as your data roaming for international roaming, or you can have SIM 2. You can choose which carriers each one is which one it logs on to, your preferred network, so 4G, 3G, 2G, or all of them, which is what I have. Pretty straightforward, easy to easy to use. Uh, tethering and portable hotspot, I won't get into. Dual SIM settings, now this is a nice important one. Again, it's grayed out because I haven't got my SIMs in here. Um, you can set your default calling SIM, so if you want SIM 1 or SIM 2, pick it. You can also pick which one is your default mobile data SIM, so you can have either one. You can also enable call forwarding between both SIMs to make life a lot easier. And you can have dual SIM 4G. So you can have 4G running on both SIMs. I apologize, I know it was a bit hard to see, but it was grayed out because I haven't got anything in there. Uh, the rest of this stuff I will not get into. Uh, the nice device connectivity, so you've got Bluetooth, NFC, straightforward stuff, Huawei Share. Now, if you've got a, it's worth setting this up because if you've got a computer, download Huawei Share onto your computer because it allows you to, like Apple's AirDrop, wirelessly drop things via the mobile, the Wi-Fi network from your phone into your computer and from your computer into your phone over the air. Very, very useful. It also allows you to print using mobile data. So if you have a printer that's connected to your Wi-Fi, very, very handy for that. So let's take a look at easy projection now. Uh, what this allows you to do is you can mirror your screen onto a big TV or a big monitor without any cables via using Wi-Fi. Very, very useful. I believe the TV has to have something called mirror cast in order to do that. My TV does. I'll do a separate video highlighting that particular um, option. I won't do it here. It'll take too long. 
But here where it says projection mode, you can either have it so it's mirroring the screen of your phone to your big screen, or you can have it as desktop mode. I would suggest set it up as desktop mode because it's then, it's, it's like using a Windows PC, that kind of experience, and you use the screen as the trackpad. So definitely use desktop mode. And we'll come out of this. Home screen, see so obviously here, what kind of magazine unlock. So I won't get into this too much. You can pick this switch off magazine unlock. This is basically your lock screen wallpapers. I would switch that off personally. Your themes, the wallpapers you wanna use. Um, now home screen settings, we've already seen that. That's what that is at the beginning. Now home screen style, out of the box, this comes standard like an iPhone. So you don't have an app drawer, all the icons across all your home screens, I hate that. So I always select draw. I would use this option because you have the traditional Android layout. Uh, you can also have a lock screen signature. So if I go into there, I can type in wherever I want and it will show up on my lock screen. And show step count, let me switch that off. I do not want my step count being shown because it's pointless for me. We're going to display. Now I've got this auto adjust set a switched off for the sake of the camera and the filming so it doesn't keep going weird when I'm trying to film. But normally I'd have it on auto adjust. It helps to save battery because and it helps with the different lighting levels. So if you're in bright sun, it will ramp the brightness right up, making it easier to view what's going on on your phone. Color mode, I set it to vivid. I just, I like that more vivid look, especially with an LCD panel. Having vivid makes it look more colorful, brighter. And you can also adjust the color temperature here. Sleep, now I've got it set to never. If I were you, I'd set yours to 15 seconds or 30 seconds maximum. So you save battery. So when you're not using the device, the screen goes off quicker. Eye comfort, now I've switched eye comfort on simply because it's easier on my lens here to film what I'm doing. It just makes life that bit easier for me. But in reality, you'd have this eye comfort switched off and I would schedule it here. So I have it set to start at 10 p.m. and then it goes off at 7 a.m. the next day. You can also adjust the warmth or, or coolness of the actual eye comfort mode. So if it's warmer, it'll be a more yellowy kind of darker tint. If it's cooler, it'll go more brighter and bluish in tint. Text size and display size. So that's the, the, the default. So if I go like that, you can see how that adjusted. That's the default, like that. If I go to the largest, you can see how much bigger that is. So if you've got bad eyesight, maybe that's a way for you to go. And text size, so that's normal. That's huge. So I'll leave it on normal right there. So normal is good for me. Screen resolution. Now this one, I would switch on smart resolution because again, it will swap, swap between HD plus and full HD plus. So 720 and 1080p, depending on how you're using your device, the AI in the View 20 will work it out for you and adjust the resolution accordingly for you to save battery power. Remember, the less pixels it has to deal with, the less battery it's using. I've just got it set up as full HD plus for the sake of my filming. More display settings. So full screen display, you go in here, you can pick which apps you want to be full screen display. So basically edge to edge. At the moment, I've got Amazon Music, Amazon Shopping, YouTube, etc. Now, notch. Now, they call this a notch. It's not a notch. It's a hole punch camera. So if you don't like that hole punch right there and you want to hide it, you can click on that and it brings up this kind of bar at the top to make it look like a bezel. One thing I don't like about this is if you look at the corners here and then look at the corners at the bottom of the screen, they're not symmetrical and that irritates me. But I don't mind the hole punch because it's over that side. It works fine for me like that. It's out of my way, out of my face. 
um, display carrier name. You can have that so it's displaying it here, but as I said, I've taken my SIM card out so you won't see it, but you can switch it off if you don't need that part of your notification bar to be taken up. And you can also display network speed, which I haven't got my network switched on, so I can't show you that, but I'm just going through all the simple things for you guys. So we'll come out of display now, go into sounds. So media, ringtone, alarms, calls, silent mode, vibrate on silent mode, which is a nice feature. So if I've got on silent mode, I usually do put it on vibrate in silent mode. So I can feel it in my pocket going off if I'm in a meeting or, some, or something like that and I can't be disturbed and I'm expecting an important phone call. It won't disturb everyone in that meeting. Only I will know that's happening. Um, do not disturb. So you can set this up so it's scheduled. So for example, mine, it's if I schedule it, switch it on, it will come on from Sunday, Sunday and Saturday, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next day. Um, you can select an event, add a new thing, etc. Um, or you can just switch it off manually, etc. That will stop any notifications coming through and disturbing you. Well worth doing, especially at, at night. So you don't have to think about it. It does it automatically for you. Nothing worse than being in a deep sleep and then getting woken up. These are straightforward, different notifications, sounds and ringtones, etc. You can have different ringtones for each SIM card. And you can also have vibrate on ring switched on for both or for one or the other. So well worth looking at that as well. So more sound settings. So dialer touch tones, I've got it switched off. You can have it switched on. So when you press the keys, it makes a sound. Uh, screen lock sounds, screenshot sound. So that I like because I like hearing that confirmation that I've actually done that action. Uh, screen touch, I've got switched off because that will get annoying. Uh, vibrate on touch is a bit like haptic feedback, if you, if you know what I mean. And um, mobile broadcasts is something we don't really use in the UK, to be honest. So we'll come out of this. Let's go into notifications. So app icon badges, we've already covered that at the beginning of the video. Uh, lock screen notifications. Now I've got it to show, but you can set it up. So do not show or show, but hide the contents. I've got nothing to hide, so I show it. So notifications turn on the screen. So if you're sitting on your desk and you get a notification, the screen will turn on to show you that you've got that. I don't like that because I get so many notifications, so I switch it off. Pulse notification light. Now that is here in the actual grill itself, the earpiece. And notification method, you can have icons up here or numbers or none. I like the traditional icons because I can see which apps I've got notifications for. So come out of this. And we've covered that, sorry. So if I go into Amazon Music now, see playback controls, status bar and lock screen. Go into here, allow notifications, displaying status bar, banners, banners are when they drop down and go back up. Priority display, so it shows it above all other notifications, vibrate, sound, etc. This is quite an in-depth thing. It's a personal thing. If I were you, when you set up your phone, go into this, pick each one, you how you want it displayed or notifies to notify you because it makes life easier. You don't want, if like me, you've got hundreds of notifications coming through all day. You just do not want the headache. And this is batch. So you can switch off individual ones altogether. So if I switch off Asphalt 9, notifications are totally disabled for Asphalt 9 now. I'll switch it back on. So come out of here. Apps, we're going to this real quick. These are individual apps. These are the permissions. So body sensors, one of my apps is allowed to use it. Calendar, five of 14 apps are allowed, call logs, etc. Default apps, now in here, and I've tested this, you can use another launcher, you don't have to use Huawei's one, or Honor's one. 
you can set Nova as your default launcher or what it, whichever one you want. It does allow you on this device, and I think a lot of people will do that. They'll set up their own launcher. You can pick here now which things you want as your default. So let's let's have a look at music. So I can have the built-in music player, or I can have Google Play Music as my default app to when I want to run music. Email. So I can have Gmail, the built-in email app. I don't know why it's got PayPal glitch there, I suppose. Browser, I've got Chrome, etc. So you can go down like Word document. At the moment it's Google Docs. I could probably make it into Windows, doc, um, Windows, Word for Windows, sorry. And so on. Assistant and voice input. So assistant app is Google and you can see that for yourself. Okay, uh, that's your default apps. App Assistant, this I haven't really used. This is for playing games and so on. So game acceleration, uninterrupted gaming. So if you're into your games, you can add a game into here. So if I click Asphalt 9, now Asphalt 9 there, is there. So feature description, let's go look. App Assistant lets you manage your games in one place. Features you set in App Assistant only apply to added apps. Apps that are added automatically cannot be removed. So system settings will be optimized for gaming. Performance will be boosted, but your device will consume power more quickly and may heat up. And all on-screen notifications will be blocked except for call, alarm, and low battery notifications. Calls and alarms will be silenced and your device will not vibrate. So that's what this is for. So you can switch on uninterrupted gaming, game acceleration, etc. So that's more for your gaming and so on. And App Twin, I haven't used this, but because you've got two SIM cards, you can then use two Facebooks and two Messenger apps, two WhatsApp apps, two Telegram apps. So you can have Facebook logged in under one name and then have another Facebook logged in another name, etc. Very useful, especially if you use the dual apps. Come out of that. Now battery. Now because this is an LCD panel, there is no night mode or dark mode or blackout mode or whatever you want to call it. But you can optimize battery usage. So if I go into here, it tells you here, one power intensive app, enable automatic launch management to save power. Screen brightness set to 55%, set to auto to save power. So I'm not gonna go into all this now. Turn off GPS, turn off auto sync. It kind of does that butler thing for you. It tells you what you need to do to optimize your battery. Now, performance mode. In performance mode, I'd have 17 hours, one minute remaining. Power saving mode, I'd have 41 hours remaining. Ultra power saving mode, I'd have 115 hours remaining. Very useful features these, especially when you're out and about and haven't got a charge or a power brick to save you. App launch. So you can go into each one of these apps and you can set it up. So let's go into Telegram. So manage manually, auto launch, secondary launch, run in background. They're all switched on at the moment. If I want to, I can set it up so when I switch the phone on, it doesn't automatically launch. Um, I can stop any other app from launching it. And I can also keep it running in the background if I want. But if I switch this on, it'll manage it automatically for me. Go into here, launch records. I'm not gonna go into that too much. Come out of this. Battery usage. So you can see here my battery usage on the software. If I go into hardware, screen has been awake for four hours, five minutes. Come out of here. Power consumption details. You can see I've had it on for one day, four hours, running Wi-Fi and LTE at the same time. And I've still got 17 hours, 55 minutes left and over four hours of screen on time. So this thing is a battery champion. 4,000 milliamp hour battery, you know it's gonna be the case. And here, battery percentage. You can have it so it's hidden next to the battery or inside the battery. I have it inside the battery to save space on my notification bar. 
but it is clearer if you have it next to the battery because you can see it separately up there. But as I said, I'd rather have it inside the battery to save that. So if I go and do more battery settings, power intensive app history, you can view this. See no power because I've got it optimized, no power intensive apps. Stay connected when the device sleeps. Your Wi-Fi or mobile data connection will remain active after the screen turns off. And I've got it switched on. If you switch it off, you won't get any notifications coming through when the screen's off. So just be aware of that. So we'll come out of this. Now storage, 256 gigs out of the box. I've used 24.8 gigabytes of storage so far. You can see which things are using the most storage up in your device and you can clean it up. So if I go to clean up, see cached videos, hasn't found any. 78 large apps, you can clean them up, it'll get rid of them. Messenger cleaner cleans that up. That's Facebook Messenger, etc. And we come out of this. Now digital balance. Now this is something really, really useful, especially if you've got kids using your device. I use this because for me personally, I'm finding, finding I find my on-screen usage is too, too lengthy. So here, for example, app limits. So you can set each individual app. So if you've got kids, you can say, right, Google Play Movies, you're allowed two hours a day, one hour a day, whatever. Bedtime, gray the screen and restrict access to apps when it's time for bed. So gray the screen and restrict access to apps when it's time for bed. You can set that up. Great, as I said, if you've got youngsters who you don't want to use the phone too often. Screen time management pin, you can switch that on, put in a pin so your kids cannot get out of that. They have to abide by the rules you've set for them. Security and privacy. Find my device on, security update, fingerprint ID, face recognition. These are all straightforward things. Password vault, so let me just put in this. Your own secure vault, Parcel, password vault stores your username and passwords and autofills them each time you log into an app. This is very useful, I use this all the time, especially with banking apps and things like that. When I'm on the internet, it'll automatically fill the, the different fields in, makes life a lot easier. So, so if Twitter, Instagram, eBay, it automatically fills it. And you can see that there. And as you use each app, it gives you the option if you want to store the passwords and so on in your password, password vault. App lock. So, turn this in. See, now you can set this up. I'm not going to do it now because I I use this phone. I don't need to lock, lock any apps. This is like a, just a, what's your father's name? You can have whatever you want here. What's your mother's name, etc. It's so you can lock individual apps. So people, to, for anyone to access those apps, they need to be able to unlock them. Private space. Private space is basically completely separate space where you can store files, information, and other stuff. You can set a pin number, pattern, or password to create private space. Once it's set up, you can access it directly from the lock screen. So it's, I'm not gonna enable it now. You can have it two different fingerprints. So you can have one fingerprint, this one, and then with the left hand, I can use this fingerprint. And it will take me to two different, as if I'm using two completely different devices. So if you wanna set up a work one, you could, and a private one you could if you want to have one for where you do all your dodgy stuff i'm not going to get into or judge anyone for whatever they do or you can have a setup where it's you don't mind who sees it it's worthwhile having that file safe so you can encrypt your photos videos music etc and it'll save it so people can't steal them more settings Device administrators, encryption and credentials. I'm not going to get into this that much. Come out of this. Going to smart assistant now. Accessibility. 
usual stuff here. Nothing spectacular. High touch is visual shopping. So you can click on something and it will find it for you. I, I don't use it personally myself. So you can hold two fingers of on an image or something you like, High Touch will tell you what it is and show you where you can buy it. So if you're on the internet, you know, if it's something you do a lot, go for it. Me personally, no. One-handed UI, so you can have a mini screen view or a shifting keyboard. So method one, if you're not using three key navigation, swipe up diagonally from one of the bottom corners. Method two, if you're using three key navigation, swipe left or right across the navigation bar and it will shrink it down to a mini screen, making it easier to reach with your thumb. Shifting keyboard, it moves it left or right, depending how you want to have it set up. Motion control, so you have core coming through, you can flip to mute it, pick up, Set what happens when you pick up your phone. So if I, I've got it wake the device. So when I lift, it wakes the device, scans my face, unlocks straight away. Raise to air to answer or make calls or control the speaker. So stroke Bluetooth headset. So when you've got a call coming through, place it to your ear. The sensors up here will sense that. It'll answer it automatically. Three finger screenshot. So three fingers takes a screenshot. Let's see if I've switch it on come out of here there we go you can see that uh, knuckle gestures there's a lot of these take a screenshot so let's do that I can't do it because I'm not holding the device but you get the gist of what I'm saying uh, open apps, draw a letter to open apps, split screen, or with the knuckle, you can set how you want to do it. So that's a useful feature if you're into that. And let's go into system, about phone, software update, straightforward system navigation. I've got it set on gestures. So as you can see, it's showing you the different gestures and what they do, how they work. So there's your home. And it will show you in a minute recent tasks very iphone like experience and then google assistant from either corner swiping up you can have three key navigation switched on if you prefer or a navigation dock which <coughs> i prefer the gestures it just feel more smoother and easier to use uh, language and input so key, default keyboard i've got swift key I can put Google keyboard wherever I want, language, etc. And I'm not going to get into the rest of this stuff. It's pretty basic. Backup and restore, phone clone. See, that's when you copy over to a new device. So that's pretty much that. So there you have it, guys. That was my top tips and tricks for the Honor View 20, the complete software walkthrough use those tips i've given you to help you out in the long run make life nicer and more smoother when you're using your view 20. if you like the video give me a thumbs up share it on all your social media don't forget to smash the subscribe button and the bell notification icon because i've got a lot more videos coming up i've got this versus the oneplus 6t and i've got too many. I'll, I'll do a camera comparison of this versus the P20 uh, Mate 20 Pro because a lot of you are asking me for that. So I hope you found this useful. Anyway, until next time, this is Tegzilla saying take care and peace.